Hello everybody, welcome back once again to the Final Fantasy X HD Remaster. Uh, I've got yet another guide for you here. So this one uh, is going to be all about how to obtain the Celestial Weapons. Uh, they are the best weapons in the game. And uh, very, very powerful. Uh, they're, they're even unique in that you know you can make you can make some weapons or you can make weapons that are similar to them and have the same sort of effects but they don't they won't ever behave quite the same because of uh, some some interesting defense ignoring um, aspects to these so again I think that they're the the most powerful weapons in the game uh, broadly speaking but um, anyway, so the first thing that we want to do here is we want to obtain the Cloudy Mirror. And the Cloudy Mirror uh, can only be obtained first by uh, doing the the Chocobo training. Uh, the trainer is located on the northwestern side of the Calm Lands. And um, here you can see I failed <laughs> for my first uh, little training here. This is the Wobbly Chocobo, and it's really obnoxious because these things just run all over the place. And so we have to try to you know, reduce the amount of side-to-side -side motion uh, that it that it goes through here and just try to get it, you know, pointed down uh, in a straight line here to uh, to beat the 12.8 uh, timer. Um, there are some minor rewards for, uh, you know, accomplishing this, but it's not, it's not, certainly not worthwhile to, to kind of, you know, keep repeating it or something like that, but um, after you've done all of the, the, the trainings, and I don't, I don't know if you only have to do the wobbly, but it doesn't matter. You really want to make sure that you knock out all four of the different trainings. There's like, you know, wobbly dodger, and then like hyper dodger, and then the, whatever the race is at the end. Uh, is it called catcher? I think something like that. Anyways, uh, you really want to do all four of them. And then once you've, once you've, uh, done all four, then we're able to, actually ride the chocobos around the calm lands which is pretty nice if you don't have a no encounters uh armor uh quite yet and um, that'll just get you you know around without having to deal with the random encounters in the area but uh down in the southwestern corner southeastern corner sorry of the uh calm lands up on a ridge uh there is a uh, chocobo feather on the ground and in much the same way as it is on the the Meehan high road uh, the chocobo feathers, when you uh, you know press the X button when you're standing over the top of them while on a chocobo, it'll fly down. And so, in this case, it leads to the Remium Temple. Uh, on the right-hand side of the Remium Temple, there is a uh, chocobo. And um, here I just took a little cut, so I zipped down over to this right-hand side. And um, this is kind of a little mini-game. There's some really, really good prizes here, actually, for uh, accomplishing this. Um, first of all, the, the, the first prize, which is just really easy to get, it's super basic and just running all the way down to the bottom and beating, uh, the other chocobo, uh, that gets you the, the cloudy mirror. And again, that's, that's a requirement to, uh, get all of the, uh, celestial weapons. So, uh, basically what I do here is I just run, you know, right down to the bottom. I think I hit, I think I hit that post back there, but I, I don't think it matters at all. We just really got to beat this guy and, um. Again, that's going to get us the cloudy mirror. That's going to be really the first major step to doing this. Again, I, I think that um, you know earlier on, the, or on the way here, uh, there's there's a couple of uh, crests for the the weapons that are actually technically available before uh, you know you can even uh, get the the cloudy mirror. But they don't do you any good until you know we've got the the mirror and and then upgrade. Uh, the mirror as well. I don't think I ever really put two and two together, but all of the basically all, there's the the celestial weapons are split up into three different parts. It's the weapon itself, then there's the crest, and then the sigil. And the funny thing is that I never really uh, like I guess got uh, was that all of the crests are found uh, in chests aside from Waka's is technically found in a a locker, but. Uh, very similar, I think, to a chess. So uh, very, uh, again, I don't know why I never, I've, I probably played this game 20 times now and I don't think I ever really, you know, made that connection. But uh, anyways, <laughs> sorry, a bit of a tangent there. But um, all right, so we are in the, uh, this is kind of like the, you know, the uh, whatever, where the, the Makalania Woods meets uh, the Calm Lands here. And we're looking for these two NPCs. 
Uh, it's the wife and uh, the child. And here, you, really what you want to do here is just keep talking to them until uh, they tell you that her, basically her husband was supposed to meet them there. Uh, at which point we need to come back over uh, to the east and into uh, the screen here. We'll head up north. And this is kind of like the campsite where we were at, you know, earlier on uh, as we were coming through here. But um, here we have to tell him that uh, his family, uh, you know, is waiting for him at the crossroads. And um, at that point, then we can run back over to them and we'll have to talk to them a few more times. Um, let's see here. Alrighty. Probably could have cut this a little bit, cut this down a little bit, made this a little shorter, but I suppose why bother? All right, finally met up with my husband. Thanks for your help. Can't thank you enough. Reunited with my wife. Thanks to you all. Now, um, you know, just keep talking to him. You need to keep talking to them until they tell you that their boy is missing. So there we have it. Now, uh, we will head up uh, this very, very gorgeous ramp <laughs> uh, into the next area and right here now there used to be an NPC right there that will be gone and now the boy um, yeah notices that there's there's something going on here so uh, we will use the cloudy mirror and that will power it up to the celestial mirror which will allow us to actually start obtaining uh, the weapons themselves. Uh, the Celestial Mirror is a requirement to actually get all of the weapons. Uh, you will not be able, basically a lot of the weapons will be found in chests, and the chests will not open unless you've powered up the Cloudy Mirror into the Celestial Mirror. So, um, all right, so let's start talking uh, Crest, Sigils, weapons themselves. Uh, Titus, his weapon is very interesting in that uh, you can, it's kind of a two-for-one. Uh, by winning this race here, the catcher, I think, again, I think this is called the catcher chocobo. Uh, by winning this with uh, a, a zero, uh, or a, like whatever, I guess it's considered a perfect score, right? When you've uh, zeroed out your time, uh, you will be able to get the sun sigil. And again, the interesting thing about this is that, oh, I don't know how I got lucky there and didn't get clipped by that bird, but that's funny. Um, but yeah, the interesting thing about the uh, about this is by getting a zero, you actually get the sun sigil. And on top of that, uh, in order to get the Calibog itself, which is Titus's weapon, you actually have to beat the Chocobo trainer. And so again, it's actually a bit of a two for one here where if you can manage to get a zeroed uh, timer, again, there you get the sun sigil. Um, but also the, the requirement to actually get the Calibog itself uh, is for the trainer to, uh, or to win against the trainer. Uh, the reason why you need to win is because that NPC right there uh, is blocking this little ramp. But any time you beat the trainer, uh, he comes out and you know to congratulate you. And so, again, if you actually are able to, uh, if you've got the Celestial Mirror and uh, you beat the trainer with a z basically a perfect time, you get the Sigil and you get the Calibog itself. So, again, it's a two for one if you've, uh, if you've been able to, or if you've, uh, again, got the uh, Celestial Mirror. So, uh, there it is. Very, very powerful weapon. Um, one, of the, one of the most useful ones in the game because Titus himself is... Uh, so useful. So um, the only kind of crummy thing about uh, this is that, you know, we can't quite power up his weapon as early as possible because the sun crest is back here. Uh, and that is right after beating uh, Unaleska. You definitely want to get that right away because if you wait until later, you have to defeat Dark Bomb at first. Um, all right. So the, the next weapon is the uh, Nirvana. Uh, basically, we need to capture all nine of the different fiends in the Calm Lands, and he will uh, give us this chest. Um, I was actually, uh, or I had to, um, I had to come back here later because I actually had still only got just the Cloudy Mirror at this point. So 
Uh, I had to come back after powering it up uh, in order to actually get the uh, Nirvana. And I'm sorry about the uh, really dr drastic drop in uh, quality there. Uh, I had to grab some footage from I guess, videos that I had actually made uh, online. And so, I, of course, I lost a bunch of quality here. Uh, same same goes here for the this is the moon crest. Uh, this is actually the early or the the earliest of all of the different you know components of the celestial weapons, and this is right as uh, Titus wakes up uh, in Besaid. Um, all right, so the next one is the moon sigil, and this is obtainable by defeating every single Aeon at Remium Temple. The only way to get this, of course, is if you've already obtained, uh, you know, all of, basically all the all of the storyline ones up through Bahamut, uh, and then you need to get Yojimbo in the Cavern of the Stolen Faith, uh, then Anima in the Baj Temple, uh, and then at that point uh, we'll have to have the the Blossom. I think it's the Rod and the Crown. I think it's two different, two separate items. Um, one of them is, is, uh, is, I believe, obtained right after uh, defeating Bahamut. And then uh, I forget which, which specific item, if it's the, uh, it's like the Blossom Crown or, you know, again, or the Scepter or something. Like, again, I can't remember exactly the, the two uh, items that you need to unlock the Magus Sisters. But uh, you do need the Magus Sisters in order to uh, get the uh, Moon Sigil. So... Um, yeah, uh, make sure that you've do, done that, and then at that point, uh, we will be able to actually face, you know, the Mega Sisters once we've kind of unlocked them here. Uh, and then at that point, we will send Belgamine, and that will give us the Moon Sigil. All right, next is Orin's uh, Masamune, and um, here is... Uh, here is, there's actually a requirement uh, for the Masamune, which is a little interesting, I suppose. Uh, but uh, this is obviously, we're, or maybe not obviously, we are very close to the Cavern of the Stolen Faith. And here we'll just go on the, along the, the, the right-hand side. And we're looking for the Rusty Sword item, which is right here in the ground. Uh, grab that, uh, come over here and say hi to Durin, and then take the Rusty Sword over to uh, Mihen. Or so, I'm sorry, I think this is technically the road to Jose. I don't know if this is still considered the Mihen Road. I don't think it is. I think this is the Jose. Or maybe Mushroom Rock Road, something like that. Anyways, um, pretty easy to find. But uh, yeah, anyways, you take the lift up, put the rusty sword in the ground there, uh, and then it kind of reveals the, uh, the, the chest, I guess, or compartment here on the back wall. Uh, obviously... You know, uh, interact with that with the uh, Celestial Mirror, and that will give uh, Orin the best-looking weapon in the entire game. Again, the Masamune. Very, very, very cool stuff. All right, so next is the Mars Crest. Uh, this is obtainable right after we're able to grab the, uh, the Chocobos uh, and after facing the Chocobo Eater. Uh, this is down in the low road. This is the Mars Crest right there. Again, very, very easy stuff. Uh, next is the Mars Sigil. This is all from capturing. You need to capture 10 monsters of 10 different species in 10 different regions. Uh, so, uh, capture. Capture stuff. <laughs> okay, up next is the world champion. That is Waka's Celestial Weapon. The requirement for this is to, for one thing, maybe it's obvious, have the Celestial Mirror in your possession. Also, uh, win uh, or place at least third uh, in a tournament. Very easy requirement. Uh, and it's it's actually just a shame that you have to have the Celestial Mirror, Celestial Mirror to get that because it would have been obtainable very early in the game. But uh, anyways... Uh, next up is the Jupiter Crest, is it? Yeah, Jupiter Crest, and that is in the Orox uh, locker room. And uh, very, is that technically the last? No, that's not the last uh, locker on the right-hand side. It's the second to last. 
Now, all right, so uh, for the rest of his, uh, or I, I should say for his sigil, very tough. Uh, or lo I should say lots of requirements. Basically, you need the attack reels, which is a tournament first prize. Then you need the status reels. That's a league first prize, but also you have to have participated in 250 or more battles. Then uh, it's the Oroch reels. That is a tournament first prize, but the requirement is to get the status reels and participate in 450 or more battles. Then the Jupiter sigil is obtainable after obtaining the Oroch reels. So again, very important uh, that you that you get them all in sequence. Um, yeah, uh, it it takes it's probably going to take quite a bit of uh, of you know blitz ball play. I'll be honest, I mean, I always play a lot of blitz ball every time I play play through the game because I love it. Um, which you know I assume that also kind of stinks for people that don't love playing it so much. But um, you know, I don't know. I I really like the game, and um, fortunately or unfortunately, you will have to play quite a bit in order to again get uh, get the Jupiter sigil. So again, attack reels first prize tournament then status reels that's a league first prize but again uh, you know you need attack reels first and you have to participate in 250 or more battles then it's oroch reels tournament prize again obtain status reels participate in 450 battles or more then jupiter sigil is a league first prize at, if you've obtained the oroch reel so again it all builds on itself you have to get the the earlier overdrives first, and then finally uh, you'll get the, the sigil. All right, moving on. Kimari, the Spirit Lance. Uh, this we have to pray to the three uh, Cactar Waystones on the Thunder Plains. Uh, that one is kind of hidden back in there, and I've already prayed to the other two. I did that off camera, but um, basically if you're, if you're having any troubles, you need to run around the Thunder Plains looking for the stones that are glowing then you press the square button in front of them. Uh, and then at that point, you can come over here to this kind of broken um, tower. And you can actually kind of see the Cactar Ghost kind of runs around the, the plains. And he'll take you right here. Uh, and then at that point, I believe also you, you press the square button next to the uh, tower. And that uh, you know reveals the, uh, the treasure chest here. And then again, same same as the rest of them, make sure that you've got the Celestial Mirror. Uh, interact with that here, and Kimari will receive his uh, Spirit Lance. All right, let's... I probably should have cut this out a little bit, but... <laughs> what are you looking at, dude? Boom! I don't remember that. There we are. Okay. Pretty good looking spear. Uh, not too bad. It's a, it's a bit of a shame that I don't like Kimari as much, but hey, his lance looks good. All right, so uh, next is the Saturn Crest. Uh, this is obtainable right after defeating Seymour, uh, you know, just beyond the uh, Mount Gagazet. Uh, and this is right before the, you know, the Mount Gagazet cave. It's off to the left-hand side here, hidden quite well in a chest. And, um, yeah, uh, pretty tricky. Pretty tricky indeed. Uh, next up is the Saturn Sigil. Uh, this one can be annoying or not. It depends on how much you like the, uh, the butterfly game. Uh, basically, there's three different points in the game where you can play the the butterfly catcher. Uh, one is immediately, uh, right on our on our trip through. Then it's right after uh, defeating the spheromorph, uh, and then the third time is after we've got access to the uh, airship. And um, so uh, this one next to the the guy playing the harp or girl playing the harp or whatever it is playing the harp. Uh, is how you start this one out. Um, again, it's it's you know try to avoid the butterflies as much as you can. Though uh, here, as you can see, I actually did even run into one, 
and uh, still was able to uh, pull this off in time. So, um, you know, uh, if you uh, are, are struggling, just I suppose know that you can actually mess up even once like I did just there and, uh, and still have enough time to do this. So uh, practice, practice, practice uh, to, to obtain that. Again, uh, one of the more annoying mini games, though I would say not nearly as bad as the uh, Lightning Dodger. But, um, yeah, all right, so that is the Saturn Sigil, and uh, that is the, the last part of Kamari's Weapon. Um, so up next, and I'm not sure why I didn't cut this stuff out, but, you know, getting lazy with my editing, I guess. Uh, next up is the Onion Knight, and uh, the requirement here is to defeat a Geos, Geos Gano, uh here, and, um, and then we'll swim down uh, and uh, obtain the chest. It's, uh, I'm not sure why, but I, I cut this down for some reason, so... Uh, you don't actually see me get this out of this chest, which is a little weird. I'm not really sure why I, you know, chopped this out, but it is located down here on, like, the southern side of this area. There we are. Uh, interesting side note. It is the one, uh, the one celestial weapon where the character who it's for doesn't actually appear to, to take it. Not sure why they did that, but... Um, yeah, uh, I thought that was at least kind of interesting. Uh, anyways, uh, the Venus Crest here is located uh, on the the far plane. So um, that's actually available uh, right as we pass through Guado Salam for the first time. Uh, and then we've got, of course, the Lightning Dodger. Uh, I would say that this is the most difficult uh, of the of the different. I guess parts of the uh, the celestial weapons. Uh, but basically, what I do here is make sure that I've got uh, no encounters, uh, and then you look for this little crater. It's it's very close. You can probably tell from the map where I'm at here, but uh, very close to a tower. But basically, what I do is run towards the tower, uh, just far enough away, and then run back to the the crater. Um, this is, in my opinion, the best spot to do this. You can try your luck, I suppose, at running around just randomly, but uh, that's not going to go well for you. And um, I just think that this is the spot uh, to do this, or at least it's the spot where I chose to do that. You can kind of see there's some marks on the ground, too. You can see like a little, like a, a dark, it looks kind of like a hole. Uh, and you really just want to run past that and then back. Uh, and then right outside here, outside of the... Uh, the travel agency uh, here on the Thunder Plains. There'll be a chest, and um, this will be where we collect all of our rewards. Um, basically, there's you know various uh, rewards for dodging lightning, uh, also uh, being hit by uh, lightning. And um, this is where we will get our what is this thing called Venus Sigil, which uh, you know. It's funny, uh, in, in a bunch of the different playthroughs that I've done for the game, I know, especially like the, the first time I went through, I remember uh, trying to do this at like 3 o'clock in the morning one night where I was just extremely tired, and I know I made it up into like 190, I don't know, 3 or 4, and then of course I got struck by a bolt. <laughs> so uh, I learned my lesson uh, then and there to never, tr uh, you know, attempt that at... Uh, you know, the, the wee hours of the morning. So make sure you're fresh uh, and, uh, you know, well-rested and your reactions are uh, good. Uh, anyways, next up is uh, Riku's God Hand. Uh, God Hand is a very, very easy weapon to get. All you need to do is uh, input God Hand in the input section of the, uh, the airship menu. Um, there's a, you know, it was it three or four, maybe five different treasures that are uh, obtained that way? And the God Hand is indeed one of them. Uh, so again, you know, put God Hand uh, in in the uh, in the list, all capitals, by the way. And um, then you'll fly over here to the. I think it'll it'll be what is it? Was it Mushroom Rock Road? I think uh, was the destination, and uh, it basically puts you down below where we weren't able to get to before. 
and um, that is where Riku's God Hand is at. All right, next uh, we are in the uh, Bikinel Desert. Uh, this is uh, you know pretty easy right there in the uh, the the western side of the of the final screen of the desert, uh, and that gets us the Mercury Crest. Um, here is the Mercury Sigil. Uh, I've basically cut out all of it, but you have to play the little Cactar mini game where you interact with this uh, stone here, and you play the red light green light game with uh, the Cactars. And um, once we've uh, once we've done all of them, uh, it removes the sandstorm here that um, kind of blocks our path or passage into uh, the. I guess this is supposed to be like the, the Cactar area down here. Uh, and then right inside the first chest here is the Mercury Sigil. So uh, that is that. That is all of the weapons, all of the crests, and all of the sigils. And at that point, um, I, I, you know, br br basically what you need to do is you need to bring all of the weapons uh, here to the spot where we uh, first upgraded the cloudy mirror to the celestial mirror. And um, basically, uh, you know, it'll bring up a menu. It'll ask ask you, you know, do you want to, uh, what does it say, per, you know, perform the ritual. Yeah, and, you, and then you have to, you have to offer the, I think it's the, you know, the, the crest and the sigils to fully unlock the power of these weapons. Uh, honestly, the, the weapons are pretty much dead weight until you have uh, fully unlocked them. I think they all start out with, you know, no AP, and then I don't remember if it's like the sigil that, you know, pulls the no AP off, and then, you know, I, I just, I don't remember. But, uh, again, I, I, I think they're just completely dead weight until you uh, finally unlock, or fully, uh, I should say, unlock them. Uh, and, uh, you know, by the time you've got the airship, uh, you're, you're, you know, pretty, pretty much able to get all of these. And, um, <laughs> this, this process is maybe a little bit obnoxious, but hey, you only have to do it once. So, um, that is pretty much it. Uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I'm missing here. Oh, uh. The Celestials are actually linked to Yuna's Aeons as well. I, I'm rusty now on, on which ones are linked. Actually, you know what? Let me, let me grab it here. Why not? I'm, uh, I've got my list here pretty close. So, um, yeah, let's take a look here. All right. Let's talk, uh, so Veil 4 first. Do, 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 do. When Yuna activates her legendary weapon Nirvana... All of Veil 4's attacks can break the damage limit. So um, you'll only have, you know, you only be able to do 9,999 with Veil 4 until uh, Nirvana is um, upgraded. Um, Ifrit, uh, all right. Uh, Ifrit is linked to Waka's legendary weapon, World Champion. Uh, Ixion is. Uh, linked to Kimari's Spirit Lance. Shiva is linked to Lulu's Legendary Weapon. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Oh, what the heck? Oh. No, I'm sorry. Yojimbo is linked to Orin. Um, let's see here. Huh. That's weird. I guess uh, I, I guess that's another thing that I hadn't ever really thought about before. Apparently, um, Titus isn't locked or uh, isn't linked to any of the aeons. One, two, three, four, five. Huh? Who am I missing? Oh, Riku isn't either. Huh? Yeah. Well, look at that. Learn something new every playthrough. Actually, and it wasn't just one thing that I learned this time around. It was quite a few times, or quite a few things. Huh, okay, well, there you have it. Um, you know, the funny thing is the, the whole links between uh, the characters and the Celestial Weapons, 
it's funny because you know Bahamut always uh, breaks damage limit, and so does Anima, and um, and I guess technically also the Mega Sisters, but I don't find them all that interesting. I, I, uh, anyways, that said, uh, the fact that your Aeons are linked, I don't know. I I never really thought that it mattered that much, just because it's it's pretty uh, well for me anyway. It's it's rare for me to actually end up using the uh, the Aeons after a certain point. They're you know, mostly summoned in so that they can take a hit that I don't really want the rest of the party to take, so. Um, all right, anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this one. As always, I hope the guide was helpful, and hope you join me for more videos. Thanks for watching.